Um, so today we're looking at energy intake versus energy expenditure. So our learning intention for this session was students will learn how energy and intake and energy expenditure affects weight management. And your success criteria is I can explain how weight is a result of food intake and exercise. So let's look at energy intake first. So for our bodies to function and complete our everyday activities, we need to provide our body with energy. So energy is found within the foods and drinks that we consume. So it could be things found in breads, fruits, vegetables, could be things found in juice. And your energy intake um, is basically your food and drink consumed or eaten. And it looks at the energy going in. So energy intake means food going in. With your energy expenditure, um, it's the amount of energy that you use to complete activities such as sport, cleaning a room, or even walking to school. So when you exercise or move your body, that's when you are expending your energy or using your energy. So when we talk about the energy intake and expenditure, we are referring to this process as the energy balance model. So in relation to weight, the formula for this model reads that if your energy intake, so if you consume the amount of, en the amount of energy that you burn, you will maintain your weight. If your energy intake is more or if you're, um, if you're eating more food than what you're burning, then you will end up gaining weight. And if your energy intake is less than your energy expenditure, then you will lose weight. So for an example, let's identify whether weight will be maintained, gained or lost for these three people. So the first one reads that Sarah's energy intake is 2,000 calories. So Sarah is consuming 2,000 calories worth of food a day. It says here that Sarah's energy expenditure is 1,500 calories. So we can see that her energy intake is 2,000 calories and her energy expenditure is 1,500 calories, meaning that she is consuming more calories then she is burning. So if we refer back to this model, so her energy intake is more than her energy expenditure, therefore she's going to gain weight. So Ben's energy intake is 1,800 calories. Ben's energy expenditure is 2,000 calories. Let's go back to our model. So we can see that Ben's energy intake is less than his energy expenditure. So we can see here it says that he's going to lose weight. And our last person is Alex. So Alex's energy intake is 1,600 calories and their energy expenditure is 1,600 calories. So they are consuming the same amount of calories that they are burning. Therefore, they're going to maintain the current weight that they're at. So in relation to physical activity, so when an athlete is participating in sport or physical activity, they need to balance their energy intake with their energy expenditure to maintain their good energy levels throughout the day. So it's important to consider what foods to consume before, during, and after the performance. So if an athlete consumed a lot of sugar before a sporting event, this could damage their results as a quick burst of energy will then result in very low energy levels soon after, and that will have them craving more sugar. So we already, um, when we did our nutrition unit, we've already covered that the three main nutrients that we consume are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So the most efficient nutrient for muscle energy is your carbohydrates. But when your carbohydrates are low, your body will then resort to your fat source for energy. Protein is very important for muscle growth and repair as well. So we want to make sure we're consuming enough of these nutrients when we, are, when we know that we're going to be um, involved in physical activity or sports. And that way we know that our energy will be more sustained. So an example here is what would be a better option for you if you were to run a cross-country race? So we've got a wholemeal salad sandwich or a chocolate bar. In this case, the wholemeal salad sandwich would be the better choice if you're running a cross-country race just because with the chocolate bar, it is a quick source of energy, meaning that you will get a really quick burst of energy, but soon after that's going to drop and you will have very low energy levels and you will actually be craving more of that chocolate bar. Whereas if you have a wholemeal salad sandwich, your energy is going to be more sustained. You will get a little bit of a rise of energy, but it won't be as high as a chocolate bar, but it will definitely last longer. So when you're running a cross country race, 
It's going to be a very long race. You want to make sure you have enough energy to be able to complete that. I hope that this has helped you understand the energy balance model in relation to physical activity. Thanks for listening.